blood rushing to my head. <laughs> He's the founder of Little Dinks and the co-host of the Freestyle Podcast. Freestyle. And then and then Little Dinks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, We're filming this way earlier on than I'm posting, but... He's been at the 626 night market. He's our first guest that's not very flexible, I think. He might prove me wrong. I would agree. Okay. I would agree. Okay. I'm so, not flexible. Finally, someone that would be a pain. I mean, stretch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pow. <laughs> All right. So, first thing we're going to do really easy stretch. We're just going to um, grab our leg and talk. Huh? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're going to have to start with the arm stretch. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> don't know who you really are okay. so what do you currently do I'm a electrical component engineer even though it's my nine to five I consider little things to be my full-time engineering is typically 40 hours a week and then I clock out oh after I'm done all the hours outside of it is all the small bits and pieces for freestyle and little things but little things right now is my number one priority compared to every other thing I have going on you're gonna, you're gonna lean forward and try to get your hands to the floor oh yeah 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 pretty easy <laughs> yeah usually i i would have thought like your nine to five you would consider your like you know normal everyday job but it's really interesting that little dings is actually what you consider your main job it's, it's hard to say right but on an average week i spend more time on business <laughs> than i do engineering it's weird to call engineering my full time this is oh my god your arms are heavy. <laughs> Why are we still here? And then we're gonna do the same thing. And then you're gonna twist, twist. I don't think the first one worked. So you can do here. Twist, twist. Twist, twist. Yeah, yeah, twist, twist. Nice. Yeah. How does that feel? Hard, very hard. Wait, I, I feel like it feels so fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. <gasps> no, let's do easier next. Okay. Just a little neck circles. What made you get into engineering first? Well, I guess a little bit more of my background. I grew up upstate New York in a small town where a lot of the people that were there worked for IBM, including my, mm. my dad. Oh, wow. So when I was growing up, all I ever knew was IBM. I was always pretty good at math and some sciences, mm -hmm. mostly physics, like anything with a math aspect to it, I was pretty good at. You like physics? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> So I was pretty good at math, so pretty good at physics. Growing up in an Asian household, you kind of expected to go a few different paths. Mm -hmm. So doctor, lawyer, engineer, some STEM major. I didn't really like school that much. So I always thought I would do engineering because out of doctor, lawyer, all of those, those require a lot of school. So I was like, which one has the least school that fits what I'm good at? Mm. And it was engineering. IBM held an event when I was really young. I might be dating myself a little bit. Before the Wii, PS3, Xbox 360 came out, I had a chance to try all of them because IBM hosted some bring your kid to work day kind of thing. Oh, that's cute. They had a lot of the workers' kids come in mm -hmm. and just test out and play Wii, Xbox 360, PS3 before they came out. I was one of those kids. So an IBM manufactured the chips for all of those mm -hmm. consoles. From a very young age, I was fascinated. Like, I was like, that, this that is, is so cool. cool. That is cool. Like, engineering is Wii, is Xbox 360, is PS3. Engineering equals Wii. Yeah. Equals PS3, equals Xbox. Woo! So, when I was a kid, I was so excited. I was like, this is it. Like, this, this is, is it. I'm going to be an engineer. That's it. That's a wrap. Like, no, mm. nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing just else. engineering. It was literally All you see is the Wii. And it was just engineering up until my freshman year of college. Mm. So after my freshman year of college, I had the really amazing opportunity to intern at that IBM mm -hmm. back home for the summer and then do a co-op for the, the fall. And that's where I thought my dreams were coming true. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it like made me realize the complete opposite. This is not what I want for myself at all. What made you like think like, oh, this is not what I want? So I'm a little crazy. Oh, me too! I hate sitting still. Oh, same. I hate sitting still. I love learning. Mm -hmm. and I love growing. Mm -hmm. One thing that I realized when I worked at the internship and I looked at the people who were 20, 30 years ahead of me, they looked so monotone. Every day was the same thing. There was no excitement. Okay. No excitement. And I'm someone who needs. And like even the tasks that I was doing, it was 
repetitive mm -hmm. and like repetition is fine when there's added aspect of a challenge to it for me personally mm -hmm. but for an internship you're not really expected to do too much mm -hmm. you're only there for a short period of time so it's very it's like learning small yeah they don't usually give you yeah bigger projects to work on. That was part of why it was so eye-opening, even as an intern where I didn't have that much responsibility. Looking at the people who were 10, 20, 30 years ahead of me, who had been in the company for 20, 30 years, I'm like, this is not it. I don't want to end up like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is not it. Now, <laughs> like, it's legit every single like meeting, conversation. Oh, hey, how was the weekend? How oh, you're like an NPC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was just the same conversations every Thursday, Friday, talking about what they were going to do for the weekend. And then every Monday, Tuesday, you talk about what you just did that weekend. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Up until vacation time, two weeks before vacation, you talk about what you're going to do on vacation. Two weeks, three weeks after vacation, you talk about what you did on vacation. After a while, it got really boring. And I hate boring. Yeah. I cannot say it's <laughs> boring. That's really when the entrepreneur side kicked in. I was like, I love challenges. I need to go out and I need to try and do something new. In the beginning, I was doing all different things because I didn't know uh -huh. what I liked. I had a lot of limiting beliefs. My mind wasn't set up or primed for bigger thinking yet. Mm -hmm. I started getting into financial services mm -hmm. because I thought, what a good way to just get started. Mm -hmm. Those are some rough times because just getting into this financial services world as a 20-year-old, mm -hmm. knowing nothing about financial services or business or sales, I looked like I was desperate for like selling stuff to peers mm -hmm. so I lost a lot of friends I didn't know how to serve I was like hey like here's a spoon this of is food. cool eat it like <laughs> this is cool yeah now buy yeah. it yeah. more is... than like persuading them why it's good and just be like you have to just get it yeah I'm like this sense. is really good you need to get it and they're like but why I'm like it's good it's good just, just believe me just, just take it uh, and I lost a lot of friends that way. Mm -hmm. Also, in that in that time period, I started going into personal development. I stopped partying. I stopped drinking. Oh wow! I, I didn't, in college. Yeah. Oh. Anyone who went to college with me can attest. I didn't drink for two and a half years. Wow. I didn't go out. I didn't party. I didn't do anything. Even my senior year, I only went out to show face because mm -hmm. I was president of my organization. So I had to go out to like be present. Mm -hmm. But I didn't drink. I took everything really seriously because I wanted to make a change and put myself on a different path mm -hmm. than the one that I was on. And I guess like maybe some of the people that left weren't meant to be friends at that point anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely did lose a lot of friends in the process or people that I thought were friends. Mm -hmm. It was hard in the beginning, then I got used to it. Then I was like pretty lonely mm -hmm. towards the end until I found an entrepreneurship group. My first one called Arte. That's how I kind of got introduced mm -hmm. to a new world of um, entrepreneurship. Yeah, entrepreneurship. We're gonna do some butterfly. You're gonna hold on to your pizzicles. Basically, you're like a butterfly flapping. Okay. Yeah. This, this is a really random question. Okay. Where would you like to fly to today? What country? What city? Where would you like to go? Ooh, I miss Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. Yeah. That's a good fly, one. Fly to Taipei. We're flying. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Taiwan. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. We're, we're... Hi, Taiwanese people. <laughs> Hello. Hi. We are here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do this where I'm like this, and then we're gonna go on your shoulder, shoulder. I think you're just gonna do like this little circle. Uh, well, okay. Gonna... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you gotta do a full one. You have to get on. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like when I was teaching gymnasts, they would do that. I was every time I would make you start dance, but I know it's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. I'm not getting. So we're gonna just try time. one at a time and then do the hard one. Oh, you're welcome. So nice. Yeah. So okay. Nice. Yeah. You wanted to start doing more like entrepreneurship, start new ventures. Little hint, hints. We have freestyle. <laughs> Little plug for Derek. <laughs> Like, how did you kind of start into that? So freestyle was my first ever real attempt at starting a business and a brand. People started to notice that I was starting to do different things. Mm -hmm. like I was waking up at five, was working out at like 5.30, 6 every morning. I followed a lot of the original grind culture. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated by it, that there was a different way to live life 
than the usual nine to five. I wanted to put all of that, like my own personal experience, and to highlight the stories of others who are going through similar journeys. I wanted to highlight their story and my own mm -hmm. into this brand. It comes from my background as a dancer, mainly popping and waving. All of it is freestyle. Growing up, transitioning from engineering to entrepreneur, everything was about bringing my own style, my own path to life. Free, free to create your free style. Free to create, oh, free yeah. to create your style. Freestyle. Originally, I was thinking, what is the best way to start? And I landed on apparel. It's wrong, by the way. <laughs> now, Freestyle is a podcast. The entire time I was just working on building a passion and bringing it to life, it was never really about making a ton of money or like selling a bunch of apparel. It was about sharing story. Mm -hmm. That's where the podcast side of things came in. Elena's yeah. in a podcast. Elena was a guest on my show. It was great. Yeah. I will say, with business, all I do is business. Yeah. Like, all I do is work. Don't get the wrong idea to think that like, oh, you start oh, I business. I can do it you whenever I want. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it is a 24-7 I mean, job. You can do that, but your business will fail. <laughs> You're not gonna do very well if you don't take it seriously. Oh yeah. You can't just start your business and be like, okay, I'm going off to Thailand. I'm gonna go have fun. <laughs> Some people yeah. have done that. I mean, once you have your business established, then you have more free time. But in the beginning, you have to like hustle. Uh, the beginning, yeah. I'm so lazy. <laughs> so this is basically, you can have your feet further apart. It will be easier. If you have your feet together, it's going to be much harder. We're going to go from here. Mm -hmm. You're going to straighten your elbows. All the way as much as you can. Oh, that's pretty good. Hey. That's pretty good. Through this first freestyle venture, what was like the main thing you learned? There are no rules. There are principles in business, but you can honestly do it however you want. And the biggest thing I learned is to get creative. Mm. Like be creative with how you start, how you market, how you bring it out to market, mm -hmm. not just the marketing part. When I started, I was limiting myself with how much money I had, how much time, uh, how much resources. So. Oh, you don't have to do this one. You don't have to do this. Oh, super close. Let's pull. Bend and pull something. <laughs> How'd that feel? Enlightening. How was like Little Dings started? How did you get into that? Like it's totally different from apparel, engineering. How did you get into this new food concept? I've always loved cooking. I've been cooking since I was in middle school. Fried rice, stir fry. I only started cooking last year. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cook too much when I was home. Mm -hmm. But then once I got to college, like I started cooking all mm -hmm. the time. Some of the dishes that I would make, grilled pork chops, honey walnut shrimp a lot. And then I joined a Taiwanese club that I eventually became the president of. Mm -hmm. We used to host a night market for like three, 400 attendees. So we had to make three, 400 servings, which was a lot. I would have never expected that that experience was going to come in handy mm -hmm. now while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Even in college, I was doing like braised pork over rice, Taiwanese popcorn chicken, mm -hmm. uh, and I was cooking that for my friends like pretty often. But it was never like a set recipe or anything like that. But me and my cousins, we used to joke about it all the time that we wanted to bring like Taiwanese fried chicken cutlet to the states because there was always halal carts, skewer carts, hot dog yeah, carts. Yeah, I don't see that many like Taiwanese. There's no Taiwanese. Yeah. So we were like, oh, like what if we just drop everything and just sell Taiwanese fried chicken cutlets on the streets at, in a cart? Last year, I started talking to some friends about like eventually wanting to do food. I was like, oh yeah, I'll start it when I'm in my 30s, when I have all this experience, all this knowledge, capital, like when I'm, when I'm good, when I'm ready. One of my good friends, he said, why are you waiting four years? Why don't you just do it in four months? Literally from the end of March, 2022, I started looking into how the food industry worked, what my options were, all of the things that comes with doing food. Mm -hmm. If this were me in the beginning, I would have told you restaurant is the way to go. I wouldn't have thought about food truck. I wouldn't have thought about food stand. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't have thought about any of this other stuff. I would have just said restaurant. Like we gotta open a cafe. But because I have a lot of experience and because I learned how to get creative, I was like, okay, that's like the lowest cost option that I can start up without having to invest too much capital mm -hmm. so that I can get it, the word out there. And so, so that's just when- Just get it started. Yeah, yeah, just to get it started. I literally spent like three months testing recipes, coming up with the logo, the, the branding of it, and a little bit of social media. The first three, four 
four months were just me sending food out to friends and Vegas locals to just taste and try it out. I was looking to do my first pop-up. This was in September. I'm good friends with one of the bigger like food influencers in Vegas. So I reached out to him to give him something to try. When I gave him the brace pork, he was like, go out and save yourself. And I was like, you're right. We're gonna huh? try your rice split now. Oh, it's not gonna work. It's gonna, not gonna work. Beautiful split. Thanks. The next week, we were literally just out eating dessert in one of the plazas, and I see this giant billboard sign, and it was like, Las Vegas Asian Night Market is back. I was so scared. There's three weeks before the event. I didn't have a website. I didn't know what any of the regulations were. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a team yet, but I applied when I got home that night, and mm -hmm. It's really funny because I ended up talking to the organizer who let me in mm -hmm. and he was like, dude, we thought you were like a scam email. We thought you were literally trying to just like scam or spam us mm. because I had no website, no nothing, no presence. I had an Instagram page with my logo and one braised pork picture. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all we were. Mm -hmm and a few followers. <laughs> so, so if you can imagine from an events organizer standpoint, like yeah, they were probably like sussed out. Yeah, like, oh. they were they were really sussed out. But luckily he gave me a call. He was like, "Hey, are you a this, real person?" Yeah. Is is this Derek? Is it little things real? Thing? Real? And I was like, "Yeah, we have we have a braised pork over rice." Like that's what we have. That's what we have. <laughs> I'm ready. And he's like, "Oh, okay. He's a real person." So they let us in. And so we got the confirmation uh, two and a half weeks out. So now I have two and a half weeks to get, to get all of everything together. I like this. I like the throw. But there's no way in hell that I would have been able to do that if I didn't go through all the years that I did with freestyle. I learned how to set up a website. I learned how to talk to suppliers. I learned how to deal with print shop, design, mm -hmm. so much throughout that process. So like, even though you don't see like, oh, massive financial success where it didn't blow up or go viral, like all of that time that I spent mm -hmm. working on freestyle was an accumulation of experience so that I can do what I do now mm -hmm. with little things. It's like and all the priceless knowledge that you gained, all the yeah. experience <laughs> was much needed. <laughs> oh. You can do a middle split. Open and... Oh. Like that. You you're still an engineer while you're doing all of this. Yeah. What are some challenges being both like doing full time engineering as well as being a full time entrepreneur? Understanding the sacrifices that mm -hmm. I have to make to be able to do what I do now. Mm -hmm. There's a few ways to look at your like life, right? Like timeline wise, you can picture each day as its own. Mm -hmm. You could say like today I go to work and then I gym and then I relax. I have a well-balanced day. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at a week mm -hmm. and say, I have work, 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 and then I relax this day, mm -hmm. and I work out this day, and I go back to work this day. Mm -hmm. A balanced week. Now I'll zoom balance. out a little bit more, and then zoom out a little bit I'll more. Fear. Right? Mm -hmm. So the challenge really is understanding like a different frame of reference in terms of how you look at your days and your time in general. Mm -hmm. When I when I look at it, I'm thinking years. Mm -hmm. This year is work year. Mm -hmm. Not this day is work day, this, this is, is rest yeah. day, this is rest what this this is As work a whole year. year. Yeah. This is work year, this is work year. I know what I signed up for. I know what I'm in for. I have not taken a vacation since twenty eighteen. Oh my god. Everything has been for work, for business, or for me moving from one place to another. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, like I wish I could also like do this and do that and, and party all the time and like still make mm -hmm. progress with my business. Like I know that's not gonna happen. So I zoomed out, zoomed out, zoomed out, and now I'm thinking years. But honestly, I am also just crazy. So <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna like stop. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna keep going. Oh, the work gears. Maybe not as crazy, but I would say like I have really big dreams. Mm -hmm. So I and that's think... like you're working, but it's fun, so it doesn't feel like you're working. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's why you can do it for a real long time without having the need to like go travel and have the leisure time because you're really passionate about what you do, right? And it's not like the 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 engineers. <laughs> Boy, and every day, I'm like, ah, I'm 
hearing. Then you're actually doing like stuff that you're really passionate about. That makes it really fun and you just enjoy your life. I have more questions. I don't think we've talked about what kind of food you sell. I just have any street food, but let's get into that. <laughs> you know I'm so don't feel like this here. For food, we do t mainly Taiwanese street food, which is right now we have a menu, like an event menu of Taiwanese where you spoke over rice. Oh my gosh. Taiwanese popcorn chicken. There's a few other things that we want to add that I can't really disclose yet because we're working on it. But my the inspiration behind the food items that we have is just me revisiting and reliving the childhood days of going to Taiwan I'm sorry. and going to a night market and then enjoying the food in the night markets. Thank you. You should post this podcast a little bit. That would be so funny. Wasn't that so much fun? Yeah. 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 You know, good exercise. Get, get. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. So you're gonna, basically, you're gonna twist inwards uh -huh. and let go at the same time. Yeah! Yeah! No, that was actually pretty good. Okay, we're just gonna work on this. You can do it right or left. Or you should do both. <laughs> I know you don't have that much free time, but if, in your limited amount of free time, <laughs> in your limited amount of free time, what do you like to do? He likes to see Spider-Man. <laughs> so, my free time, I... Free time. Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> me, me and Derek actually met through my Twitch chat. When I started streaming, we met through Twitch. And he was pretty dope and he was doing this freestyle. He was not doing little things then, but he was doing freestyle yeah. then. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. This guy's very passionate about what he does. So I was like, you're cool. Let's be friends. So we're friends now. So if you join my Twitch chat, <laughs> we might become friends. The little itty bitty bit of free time that I have. I like dancing. I honestly love watching horror, 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 movie? horror movies, horror shorts. Usually horror shorts. Horror series, not so much because I don't like have time to commit to a series. Oh. So it's usually like a short or a movie and it's so, like one done. Now, what are your goals? Ooh. My goal with little things right now, by the end of the year, the goal is to open up like a brick and mortar storefront. Mm -hmm. um, That'll be really cool. With the business long term, it's to become a uh, well-known uh, worldwide franchise. Mm, that, oh, that would be really To bring Taiwanese street food. I was here first. I was here first. Before it became a big, big, big thing, I was here first. Everyone who's We're here first. here first, yeah. <laughs> and then the second goal is to take freestyle and what we have now with the podcast mm -hmm. and build it into a startup incubator. Oh. Uh, co-working space into startup incubator so that I can be, once I have a little bit more financial success, like I can mentor. mentor and invest in oh. other people's startups to help them grow oh. their businesses. And then from there, the future future goal is to build a new educational platform mm -hmm. for one, for everybody, and then two, schools for people who are a little bit more crazy like us. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who have a less structured uh, mm. way of thinking slash learning. Mm. Oh, wait, that's nice. That's really because you don't like school, so you're trying to make school something that you yeah. would like. I have inspiration too. When I was in, it was either end of high school or beginning of college, I visited a private school. I hate my colorable. I got to visit a school in Manhattan. It's a school that was founded by the Blue Man Group. I was really inspired by it because it had the sort of structure or lack of structure that I was looking for that I wish I had when I was growing up. Mm. But I want that structure of education to be more accessible mm. to more people. Do you think as you start growing little things, you would continue with your engineering job? That was a great question. One thing that we didn't get too much into, but to be transparent, I've made business mistakes outside of freestyle and little things. Mm -hmm. Uh, where I lost a lot of money. 
So there's still debt that I'm paying off right now that I require a stable income to do. If you look at little things as a standalone, like we're okay actually. Mm -hmm. Like if, if I didn't have previous oh, business, other like debt. Yeah, if I didn't have previous debt and other <laughs> other mess ups, mm -hmm. like I would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but because I do, I need the stable income to make sure that I am afloat mm -hmm. while I build this up. And also I know that like all of my decisions have Consequences. You're really good. You keep doing that for so long. My hands are. I also know that my my own decisions have consequences, and mm -hmm. so it's important to own up to my own mistakes and just be like be aware of everything I've done and mm -hmm. what it has caused. So I know what I've done and I know what I need to get done now. Mm -hmm. As a result of my mess ups, I need to work harder to make up for it, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. To end off our open up episode, our foam rolling to, you know, make sure Derek's okay tomorrow. You don't look okay right now. What was my question? Do you have one advice for fellow new entrepreneurs? What's the main thing you would like them to know? There's so many different things that you could learn along the way, but I think the one thing that I would preach is that Whatever limit that you think exists for you, it's only in your mind. Like mm -hmm. you made it up for yourself. Mm -hmm. So like how many pull-ups you can do, how many sit-ups you can do, how many push-ups you can do, mm -hmm. how far you can run. Like all of those things are mainly lim are, are a limit that you created for yourself mm -hmm. and that you, if you went out and tried it, you'd surprise yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think if, if there's only one piece of advice that I can offer, it's, it's that. It's to not limit yourself in any way, shape, or form because any limit that you think you have right now is only something that you think of. It's you're, not real. Yeah. Yeah. You're giving yourself a limitation yeah. before you even try. Yeah, and I can give us a, like a real, real example. Like I hated running, mm -hmm. always hated running. Never thought I would be a runner. Really like, I despised running well i was like i would never run uh, mm -hmm. anything more than like two miles at a time in december of last year 2022 december 2022 i went from running one mile to two miles to three miles wow. within two weeks then i ran five miles or then i ran 3.3 then out of nowhere i ran six then out of nowhere I ran a half marathon. Oh my god. I ran 13.1 miles within a month of running. Wow. And it was just because in my mind I was like, I can do more. Mm -hmm. I can do more. I can do more. I can do more. And then I just kept going. I kept going. I kept going. I did it. Every time I did it, I was like, oh fuck it. Like I, I did it. And then I would do it. I would go further. And then I would go further. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could still do it. I went further. I still got it, went further, Aww. got it, right? Uh, and so all of the thoughts, the beliefs that I had before that point were all, I'm not a runner, I hate mm -hmm. running, there's no way I could run, like even a 5K is crazy. Uh -huh. And then out of nowhere, 5K, half done. 10K, done. Half marathon, done, within wow. a month. Basically proof that everything that I thought about myself was, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't, you never know. Yeah, you don't know until you try. Even, you don't know yourself. You don't until you push your, you really push yourself. I'm not talking about like, oh, like, I just push myself a little. Like, I'm talking about really push your limits. You can go really far. I don't think I can run <laughs> Yet. Yes. <laughs> Time to start training. <laughs> start training. Thank you for joining our episode of Open Up with Derek. Ah! I'll link all his socials down below and little things and freestyle all that <laughs> thank you for watching <laughs>